Chapter 19 of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Robin Cotter, July 2012. Women of History by Anonymous. Chapter 19 The Lady Alfreda. 950 Hume was the daughter and heir of Olgar, Earl of Devonshire, and though she had been educated in the country, and had never appeared at court, she had filled all England with the reputation of her beauty. King Edgar himself, who was indifferent to no accounts of this nature, found his curiosity excited by the frequent panegyrics which he heard of Elfreda, and, reflecting on her noble birth, he resolved, if he found her charms answerable to their fame, to obtain possession of her on honourable terms he communicated his intention to Earl Ethelwald, his favourite, but used the precaution, before he made any advances to her parents, to order that nobleman, on some pretence, to pay them a visit, and to bring him a certain account of the beauty of their daughter. Ethelwald, when introduced to the lady, found general report to have fallen short of the truth, and being actuated by the most vehement love, he determined to sacrifice to this new passion his fidelity to his master, and to the trust reposed in him. He returned to Edgar, and told him that the riches alone, and the high quality of Elfreda, had been the ground of the admiration paid her, and that her charms, far from being in any way extraordinary, would have been overlooked in a woman of inferior station. When he had by this deceit diverted the king from his purpose, he took an opportunity, after some interval, of turning again the conversation on Elfreda. He remarked that though the parentage and fortune of the lady had not produced on him, as on others, any illusion with regard to her beauty, he could not forbear reflecting that she would, on the whole, be an advantageous match for him, Athelwald, and might, by her birth and riches, make him sufficient compensation for the homeliness of her person. If the king therefore gave his approbation, he was determined to make proposals in his own behalf to the Earl of Devonshire, and doubted not to obtain his, as well as the young lady's, consent to the marriage. Edgar, pleased with the expedient for establishing his favourite's fortune, not only exhorted him to execute his purpose, but forwarded his success by his recommendations to the parents of Elfreda, and Ethelwald was soon made happy in the possession of his mistress. Dreading, however, the detection of his artifice, he employed every pretense for detaining Elfreda in the country, and for keeping her at a distance from Edgar. The violent passion of Ethelwald had rendered him blind to the necessary consequences which must attend his conduct, and the advantages which the numerous enemies that always pursue a royal favourite would, by its means, be able to make against him. Edgar was soon informed of the truth, but before he would execute vengeance on Ethelwald's treachery, he resolved to satisfy himself with his own eyes of the certainty and full extent of his guilt. He told him that he intended to pay him a visit in his castle, and be introduced to the acquaintance of his new married wife. And Ethelwald, as he could not refuse the honour, only craved leave to go before him a few hours, that he might the better prepare everything for his reception. He then discovered the whole matter to Elfreda, and begged her, if she had any regard either to her own honour or his life, to conceal from Edgar, by every circumstance of dress and behaviour, that fatal beauty that had seduced him from fidelity to his friend, and had betrayed him into so many falsehoods. Elfreda promised compliance, though nothing was further from her intentions. She deemed herself little beholden to Ethelwald for a passion which had deprived her of a crown and knowing the force of her own charms she did not despair even yet of reaching that dignity of which her husband's artifice had bereaved her she appeared before the king with all the advantages which the richest attire and the most engaging airs could bestow upon her and she excited at once in his bosom the highest love towards her and the most furious desire of revenge against her husband he however had to dissemble those passions and, seducing Athelwald into a forest on pretense of hunting, he stabbed him with his own hand, and soon after publicly espoused Elfreda. End of chapter 19